Let's see. Okay, great. Um, no. So, okay. Anything happening? It still says it'll be good to okay. present to everyone. It's usually a slight go. delay on these, but it shouldn't be that long. Yeah. Hmm. Nothing over there, huh? What if you try reloading the page just for fun? Oh, you did? Okay. Hmm. Yeah, the problem is since we might not. Okay, Jamie, I'm going to invite you. And then, another invite to you, Drew, at your Naroda address this time. And, uh, well, that works. <clears throat> You're in. So uh, the original link didn't work. I had to go to the bell, and, um, and it works. Okay. But it was also with uh, my Gmail address. Hey, there you are. Okay. Something on yours. Okay. Uh, all right, and then so Jamie, I'm going to put you onto the Practice Fusion page, okay. and Drew, if you can keep watching to kind of see. Sure. Can you what hear happened? me also? Uh, they can you hear me? Okay. Um, so that yes. Okay, good. All right, so, well, I'm going to go back out to the login screen one more time just to uh, show everybody how to log in. It's not really all that complicated. It's really just that um, now it just comes up with my email. Really, there's a choice of whether you want to log in with your username and password or you want to log in with your email and password. And I was just saying that logging in with your email is somewhat simpler. Um, if it's the first time you're using a device, um, it will prompt you to put in a code. Uh, it will send it to you by email or by text message. Text message is usually the fastest. I just put my phone number in there. I got the text instantly. Everybody saw it here. Uh, so it was real convenient. And you only have to do that once. So I just put my password in and I'm logging in. Um, so it's going to take you to this screen first. And you don't really need to deal with all this stuff unless you want to. Um, it's like linking labs, uh, e-prescribing if you, if you have the ability to prescribe, um, imaging centers, linking to them. This is something you could probably think about down the line. You can bill through this, too, for insurance billing, which is very interesting. Um, and we've done that before. Um, you can do referrals. You know, like I said, don't worry too much about this starting. I want to kind of get to the um, simple use of this. So always go up in here in the top corner and click Home. There, that takes you to pretty much the Practice Fusion sort of home page. Um, if we have real patients, they're going to be listed here, like basically the most recently accessed patients, as you can see. Uh, so, you know, I was in a high-volume practice before. This thing would just be chock full of patients. And then if you wanted to search for somebody... Uh, you can you know put them in by the last name, and it'll come up, or the date of birth, or record number, what have you. Uh, and then if you want to create a patient, uh, for one, you can search like say you know someone had a last name of Green or something. Oh look, they're not here. Okay, well sometimes they're archived because they haven't been used in a while, so it doesn't mean they don't exist. But look, oh no, no matches are found. Okay. Well, in that case, I can just create a new patient. This is a roundabout way of creating a new patient. This is the way you create a new patient if you think that somebody should be in the system, but they're, you can't find them. Uh, this would happen to me because uh, I'd see people on my schedule, and then the front desk wouldn't have created a patient for them yet, and so I could do it that way. Otherwise, you can, uh, I believe, add patients by just clicking that 
And uh, see, it even prompts you to search for existing. It doesn't want you to repeat patients. So let me just go ahead and create a patient uh, just to show you. So first name, test, last name, subject. So male, uh, date of birth is whatever, Wednesday the 10th. Search for existing. Nobody's there. Create is new. Uh, what it really wants you to put in here is it wants you to put the information I just put in, um, but additionally, an email and a phone number. But if the patient doesn't provide you with an email or a phone number, you you can just click this box, and then you won't need to put it in. I do recommend you know putting that in there because when you're searching through lots of charts, it's cool to have the contact information within the patient's profile if you need to call them or contact them or anything. But it's not required. So this person doesn't have either of those, so I'm going to click no. Um, everybody following me so far? I think so. Okay. <laughs> um, and now I should be able to create this patient. Why am I not? There we are. So save. Now, um, Select the sex, apparently. Oh, whoops. I thought I already did that. I did that on the other page, but not this one. Yeah. Always get the red asterisks, uh, fill them in. So here's test subject. Now I'm in this person's chart. So if this person had been seen by a lot of other people, uh, you would see all the previous charts and events right here. Uh, this would also be where their labs are, are located, where their imaging is located. All that would go down here. And when you get a patient that's been seen for a while, this is going to be pretty extensive. Uh, so there are you know, <coughs> other ways to look for it. You can also, uh, profile information is all stuff that you put in kind of at the first visit. Uh, people at my last clinic didn't use a lot of these features very much. Uh, so you know, you would go to something like immunizations and there just wouldn't be anything there basically, and you're just like, um, okay, that's cool. Uh, remember, always go back to home. If you get into one of these weird windows and you're just like, what am I doing? Back to home. Here we are. Uh, so don't worry too much about that. Let's just talk about creating a chart note to start. Make it simple. Start a chart note right here. Uh, you can do SOAP format. Uh, you can import other formats if you want. Um, I've most commonly used the SOAP format because just of the nature of what I do and what I have done and um, especially my last practice, it was all insurance billing, so it needed to be under SOAP format. Um, but you don't have to. But I'm going to do SOAP format just because it's probably one of the most commonly used systems. Uh, so here we go. So this is what you're going to be typing into is basically all this. Here are your vitals up on top. If if you do you choose to use them, um, you can click other users here also uh, if you're not, if this isn't you for some reason, which it would be, but you can make it seen by it. Don't worry about that. So chief complaint. So a patient's coming in with back pain today. Back pain. In pain. What is wrong with this end button? All right, here we go. And so I click on the subjective. Uh, so I can just, you know, freehand type all this as I as they're talking to me, or I can go back and do it, whatever. Um, in addition, there are templates that exist. Uh, I create personalized templates for people. So the first visit I do, just like freehand stuff, but in the future I may, you know, use one of my templates. But let's just say I'm doing a wellness exam on this person. Uh, here are some prompts to like, you know, things that you're going to want to put in if you don't want to just type it all. So doing well, no current complaints, great. Main concern is back. I still didn't, I don't know why I keep missing that I had <laughs> back pain. <laughs> uh, review of systems, no fever or chills, eyes are all happy, heads happy. So what I'm trying to show here is that mm -hmm. um, as you continue to see people, you can formulate your own templates if you need to, so you don't have to always type everything in. Every time you do type something in, if you're stepping away from your computer, if you're deciding to put your computer down, always remember to click this save button because if it kicks you out of practice fusion, you'll lose all your information. And I've had this happen to me before. So always save. So here's the core of the chart again. You see I, I filled out a little bit of subjective, chief complaints there. Uh, say I want to go to objective now. Once again, I have my templates to work from if I do so choose. 
um, you know, I did all these basic physical examinations. This is just charting normal findings. I can go ahead and click all the way through. There we go. The lungs were clear. The throat's awesome. Great. Okay. If I don't want to just click save, I can jump straight to assessment. So assessment is going to be, you know, kind of whatever you want. If you're doing insurance billing, you're going to need to add diagnostic codes, obviously. Um, so, you know, say I know some codes here. So 724.2 is lumbago back pain. Uh, you can put more information in about it, when it started, uh, the context of how it started. Uh, you can preview previous comments. Um, but you really don't have to, per se. Um, and then you press save. And so there it is. There's your diagnosis. Um, patient presents with back pain today. You know, that, all that good stuff. You can just freehand whatever you want. It's horrible. It would back pain. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, showing the subjective, objective, those things just came up. You, yeah. Did you already have those programmed? In? No, no, that was just, no, I haven't programmed anything into this practice fusion yet, so this just came up. So those are things that just come up through the, it's already in there. Yeah, yeah. So, like, say, let's see here. So, um, well, I could start another chart note with this patient if I really wanted to, but. I'll, and I'll do that in just a moment, as soon as I finish this, and I'll just show you again how it came up. It was basically just said, it was this, the part said start chart note, mm -hmm. and then I chose to use the SOAP format. Right. Okay. So, but you can add other formats in there if you want. Oh, I'll share templates, or is that, uh, your templates are your kind of, my templates are in there. Uh, there are some default templates that are in there, mm -hmm. uh, and then there's a choice of adding more templates, and I'll show you how to do that right now, I guess. Um, but right after I finish, then plan, of course, is like where you put your treatment if you're following the SOAP format. The person's going to get labs, blah, blah, blah. Okay, good. Um, so save again. If you're done with the chart, you press sign right here. Um, this locks the chart, though. This is for like insurance purposes, among other things, so you can't go back and really format the chart after you press sign. Oh, but that signs it officially as a legal document. That's like a, an electronic signature that's occurring there. Uh, you can put addendums to it, though, and say, you know, um, and you add those in a separate file. So I'm going to press sign right here. See, this will finalize the chart as a legal document. This action is not reversible. Um, all that good stuff. But you can just save it, right? So yes. You, okay. you don't need to sign it. You can go back to it. Like, I didn't need to sign it right now. I could have just, like, exited out of this whole person and went and worked on another chart. I had people in my last practice that didn't sign charts from, like, a year ago, practically. Like, they were way, way behind. It was horrible. So I don't recommend, like, putting it off forever, especially if it's, like, some kind of, like, legal document. Uh, but, yes, you can put it off pretty much indefinitely. <laughs> so you can keep adding to your chart for years down the line. Um, so here, so charting shortcuts. So I, if I want to add an amendment, I said addendum, but it's actually an amendment. Uh, I can do that here, like, to the chart if something did come up uh, that I wanted to can add into the doc to the document. And but I'm not going to do that. Uh, so now this is a this is an office visit chart. Yeah, see you later. Uh, this is an office visit chart with this, you know, signed document. So this will forever be there, basically, now. You can't really get rid of it. Uh, so that chart note that I made will always be there. Uh, and then if you will, you know, Say I just want to go to the person. I just want to get out of this completely. Uh, you can only open five of these charts at one time. Something to consider. Uh, so this is the patient that I just saw. So now I'm just going back in just as the patient. So see, I'm back to this like home screen now. But there's the chart. So I can click on that chart if I want to. Or I can go back and start a new chart in it. And this is where I can use the SOAP format if I want to. You know, I can go to something like Other. And Other is kind of just like... Well, there's a chief complaint, and then I'm just typing the rest of it in myself. So you don't need to follow the SOAP format by any means. Uh, go ahead. Um, would, each, would each visit would initiate a new SOAP note yeah. entry? You wouldn't just add to a previous one. Exactly. You would start a new one. Exactly. And that would continue to build down that next column. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Each factor. Yeah, so say this is the next visit here. Well, the good thing is is that I can actually, 
this is what I wanted to convey before. I can go to preview visit notes in past medical history. Well, look, this is when I saw them on the 22nd. This was earlier today. Um, well, look, this is exactly what I wrote last time. So I can build upon what I wrote last time, too, if I want to. So patient is still doing well, no current complaints. And you see what I'm saying, how you can build custom templates for the individual over time to where you don't really have to type stuff out. Um, if they're doing fine, you know, in general, they're still having no fever chills or weight change. This is something that's maybe important, though, to their condition, and I want to just, you know, keep putting it in there indefinitely, let's say, as long as they're doing well. Charting normal findings is important. Uh, so you can keep adding to it, and as you wish, basically. Um, and you can go back to previous chart dates. I mean, usually I just build from one week to the next or one treatment to the next. So, But if you want to go back to one from, like, a, three months ago, you can find that date, too, and go back to that chart note. So... Pretty comprehensive, pretty easy. Uh, and then, once again, you know you're done with the chart. You sign it. Cool. Now, templates. Uh, so any questions just about this general sort of like creating of a chart, signing a chart, anything like that? I try to be like pretty simplistic about it and not get into it. Because there, there are more things you can do with this, but I just want to be able to get people to the point where they can open up a chart note for a new patient, type the stuff in that they want to type in, and sign it as a legal document. And you know, at least get that far. Um, Some of the concerns are, that came up when we were first talking about lithium iron and practice fusion in particular was um, providers' concerns on HIPAA. Right. And <clears throat> whether or not I have my own practice fusion account and who has his own and they're not related. Um, or we have a Bakhti account that are related, like when you went up there and you dropped down the list of clinic providers. Yeah. So in this, what you have right up there, if you, like, so do you, can, can you see my notes? I can see your notes, yes. Okay. Yeah, because like, because this is Bakhti Clinic yeah. and we're all users on here, if you use Bakhti Clinic practice as your Practice Fusion. I have my own private practice, Practice Fusion, too, yeah. whether I choose to use it or not. I will probably put, you know, the community acupuncture up on the back Bakhti Clinic one. Uh, that, that's set so that you can do, it's, it's for ease of clinic referral. Right. You don't need to send over the records or anything. It's all right there. So, yes, they can so see all your stuff. previous practice, you guys used it this way. Exactly. Right. We were all in the same place. I can see patients that other people were seeing. Um, it's not technically a HIPAA violation unless it's like open to the you know public exactly. or your your which is displaying it or something. About it, but it yeah. Is, is mm -hmm. the well, well, and and with a collaborative such as this, where there are separate private business entities working in the same building, we're we're not all necessarily. Yes, we're in the Bakhti clinic or the center, so to speak, but we are separate businesses. So I think it's a choice of the individual at that point. Do they want to be charting within the collaborative and have that information open to them? Or do they want to just create their own account for their private practice? Um, if they have their own practice fusion account, uh, they can still very easily, if needed, transfer information to another practice fusion account of patient information selectively uh, right. to their discretion rather than look that not way. having that choice. Okay. So I would say if you're concerned about that, make your own account. It's free. You can make as many accounts as you want. I have three. So <laughs> uh, make your own account, uh, chart your own patients if you like, and if you do want to refer to somebody, it's just a few clicks clicks of a button to transfer over that patient's chart information to another practice fusion account and a provider. And they can build on that and send it back to you. Uh, it's maybe not as easy, but it's still very easy. <laughs> yeah. Great. So that allows us to have a full band. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And I, I do. I have both right now, too, and I don't know what it's gonna if I'm going to use both or just use this one. I'm, like I said, I'll probably use this one for community acupuncture. Uh, and beyond that, you know, I don't know for sure. But, um, yeah, we'll see. Okay. And then uh, for templates, uh, so you can always go to this little, like, cogwheel type deal, and uh, it'll kind of point you in different directions uh, and it'll give you more information about different stuff. But... I'm just showing you how to get to templates. So here's the template library. So here are my existing templates. 
So I just like added this one in for fun because it was like an acupuncture based one. Uh, but they just give you very general templates at a default, general physical examinations, review of systems, uh, assuming you're a basic like primary care medical doctor or something. Uh, but if you want to search for other uh, other templates within the community, you are perfectly capable of doing that. You can create your own or you can check out other people's templates. And there are just a million of these things. They, they're even given ratings. They say how many people are using them. Um, so like my specialty is acupuncture, but say my specialty was instead well, colon and rectal surgery or chiropractic. Uh, <laughs> let's just say chiropractic. Um, apparently they see people for diarrhea or something. Um, Something's going on here. Somebody's dialing into the hangar. Oh. Oh, wait, no, actually, that's not what it is. Actually, why don't you do this, Drew? Because you can do it as well. I think. Can you invite? You go up to the to the control. Mm -hmm. Can you invite somebody? Michelle. Now text her. She's going to get. You can. Well, I should. Okay, I wonder if you're not being the originator. I have a feeling we might get kicked off air at one because I set the. Yeah. Plus, Drew's got a. Yeah, exactly. His yeah. thing. I was the last um, thing I really wanted to show was just how to find templates if you're interested. So. I was trying to get. Um, oh, criminy. I don't. Wait, oh, that's the um, that's the screen, isn't it? Okay. Hmm. Okay, you know, I'm not going to mess with it because I don't want to wait. Working. So. Okay. So yeah, this is just the templates uh, template section as it goes. Um, see, uh, I can look at my templates. These are all the only ones that I have right now. Um, but like I said, search in the community. You can search by specialty if you want to. Like I said, acupuncture was the one I was like searching for before. Or you can just type in a term if you want. Like say, somebody's coming in for like foot pain or something like that. Let's say. Oh look, it's in the field of acupuncture too. So they talk about balance channels. That's pretty interesting. I don't know. <laughs> it's like you'll come up with all kinds of weird stuff. You'll see that only two people are using it and it doesn't have like a higher rating. That doesn't mean it's not good. It just means maybe people don't. Um, so say I want the chest pain one. Well, you just go over here, you click it, and you press save a copy. There we go. And you can go to my templates. Chest pain is right here. And uh, this is exact. This is basically what is written in the template section. And this is kind of the same format that you would use if you're creating your own templates. So remember those little prompts that came up that I clicked on uh, in the subjective section? Well, they have different sections for each of them if you're using the sub format, let's say. Uh, so these are the ones that are written in the subjective section somebody created. These are the ones that are, and you can add, you can add more items to existing templates if you want to, or you can remove ex uh, existing items from templates. Say you don't care about that or you don't find it relevant. Um, you can, you know, do the same thing with the objective section if you want, uh, assessment, plan, all that good stuff. So you can create your own templates, you can modify existing templates, you can use other people's templates if you think that's cool. Uh, it's really up to you. And then uh, you press save when you're done, and then you can easily find them in your charts when you're uh, looking for a list of templates.
So anyway, that's how you do templating. Uh, I highly encourage it once you get comfortable with the general charting system. I would say keep it really simple at first. Don't overwhelm yourself. But uh, if you want to take it a step further, templating will save you a ton of time with charting. Um, if you want to remain consistent with your charting and uh, you know keep it a quality legal document, I would say templating is going to be like really cool for you in the future. Uh, especially if you ever deal with insurance or ever think about uh, dealing with insurance in your lifetime. So anyway, that's pretty much all I'm going to do for today because uh, I want uh, Drew to do his talk. And uh, But if anybody has any questions at all, just contact me. You can email me. Uh, we can arrange a time. I can personally talk you through some of the stuff if you like also. I have no problem with that. Um, I just started doing this in May, and I, I put it off for a long time because uh, I was just doing paper charting, and I was like, that's cool. Uh, but once I started doing this, I really saw the ease of use, and uh, it made referrals so much simpler to be able to read somebody's chart notes and not try to translate their handwriting. And uh, when they used templating too, it was a lot easier to communicate. <laughs> you know, like, okay, these are the normal five digs that they had, and this is, you know, it's just much more clear language, I think, uh, in electronic charting all in all. So anyway, that's my uh, plug for that. So, And then might we have you back to do another one? Of course. Yeah, a week, two weeks, whenever you're ready. Yeah, and I can do another one whenever is convenient, really. A week yep. or two, we'll have you. So, yeah, sure. Thank you. Cool. And we have Michelle on the phone with us now. And, Michelle, I'm going to work back to the other Hangout. Um, okay. And uh, I just have to get rid of this, this one. Yeah, I'm trying now. Okay. That's, I don't think that's the right thing. Can I hang up? Yeah, I'm ready yet, Michelle. Didn't I say in a little while? Oh, there it is. Okay.